Hey everyone, so today I want to go over the engine oil analysis results comparing the Costco Kirkland engine oil at zero miles, 5,000 miles, and 10,000 miles. Now my most recent oil change analysis video I did, I compared this oil at zero and 10,000 miles. And I still get a lot of people saying I should stop at 5,000 miles despite the 10,000 mile analysis coming back in really good shape. So I was kind of curious if it's really good shape at 10, what does it look like at five? Does it deteriorate more from zero to five and less from 5,000 to 10,000? Or is it vice versa? Or is it basically even from zero to 10,000 miles? So that was the question that myself and a lot of other viewers had. So today I have those results. Now, before I get started, a couple logistical items I wanna cover. All these tests were done by Blackstone Laboratories. This is a very well-known oil testing lab. I've had them do all my tests as well. Uh, th all three samples came from the same five quart jug. My 2015 Toyota Corolla takes four and a half quarts of oil. So I had enough oil left over in the five quart jug to send out the zero mile virgin sample to Blackstone, as well as to put a little extra in the car for when I pulled a sample out at 5,000 miles, so I wouldn't have to add any oil to it. And also I'm using a genuine Toyota oil filter in this car. So essentially I changed the oil at 180,000 miles sent out a virgin sample, put a little extra in the car at 185,000 miles when there was 5,000 miles on the oil, pulled out a sample, sent that off to Blackstone Labs, and then when I did the oil change at 190,000 miles, when the oil had 10,000 miles on it, I pulled out a final sample and sent that to Blackstone Labs. So jump right into the data on this, uh, all the way on the top, to the, the results to the farthest left from 227, that is the virgin oil analysis. I sent out the brand new oil that had zero mileage on it. The location slash unit averages in the middle, you can ignore that. That was basically from another, the virgin results. Then I merged these other two results onto, so we can just ignore that. And then you have the, to the right, 5,000 and 10,000 mile samples. You can see the dates on that. It's pretty consistent. I do a lot of highway with this car. That's why I qualify for 10,000 mile oil changes and my mileage and driving style is very, very consistent on this oil. So starting from the top, you can see makeup oil added, zero quarts across the board. This car does not burn any oil. I do not add any oil in between oil changes ever. I also do not put any additives in this oil. So I wanted to keep this test as pure and as consistent as possible. Now on the top of the elements and parts per million, we'll start off with the wear metal. That's gonna be uh, aluminum, iron, copper, and lead. Uh, aluminum is gonna basically be the block, the pistons, the cylinder head. We had one parts per million element of trace aluminum in the virgin sample. And then you can see to the right at five and 10,000 miles, it stayed at four parts per million. So very good, very little uh, aluminum in the oil. Just below that you have iron. No trace elements in the brand new sample, and we had four parts per million at 5,000 miles and six parts per million at 10,000 miles. So still very good, relatively low wear metals. And uh, copper, which is basically anything with brass in it, like the bearings, uh, we had one part per million at 10,000 miles. So very, very little, nothing to be worried about there. And then it showed one part per million of lead at 5,000 miles, but not at 10. So that might've just been a little bit of test contamination, possibly not sure about that. But overall, very, very low numbers, well within the, the safe area of where they're supposed to be. Now, the uh, additives package. Additives package also came back very, very well. That is gonna be molybdenum, manganese, boron, calcium, uh, magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc. And you can basically go over all of them. I'm gonna post at the end of this, what each one of these elements are so you can read through and see what these elements are, whether they're bad, what they're good for, basically things like that. And it will give a more detailed explanation. But basically you can look from left to right and see that the additives stayed pretty consistent. Now, if you look closely, some of the additives, it actually showed higher numbers from 10,000 miles versus 5,000 miles, like calcium and magnesium phosphorus, zinc, some of those numbers were higher at 10,000 than 5,000. I actually emailed Blackstone about that and asking about that, and I'll go over their uh, response from that email shortly. But basically the, the uh, elements in the additives package were really good. The only one that dropped quite a bit was the boron. Basically it went down in the way you would expect it to. 
It was pretty even uh, all the way throughout. And then the contaminants are basically gonna be silicon and sodium. Overall, pretty low as well. You can see we started off at five and then with the silicone, and then we went to six at 5,000 miles and eight at 10,000 miles. Sodium started off at two. It went to four at 5,000 miles and only five at 10,000 miles. So the contaminants stayed very, very low overall. Now to the bottom, the properties. We'll start off at the top with the viscosity. There's two different ways that they measure it. Uh, just to the right, of the version sample, you can see these should be categories. And it basically, if you look left to right, you can compare of where they started off all the way on the left compared to where they went on the right. Those also showed a little bit higher on the 10,000 mile test, but basically it showed very, very well. It stayed well within the safe parameters of where the viscosity is going to be. So there is very little fuel dilution, very little soot, very little contaminants getting into the oil that are going to change the viscosity because once oil breaks down beyond where it's supposed to, it will start to thicken. That is what forms sludge. Basically, you can get soot in the oil, but in my case, I'm not getting that because I am well within the safe margin of error of where the viscosity should be. And just below that, also the flash point, you can see it dropped very, very little from zero to 10,000 miles, still well within the safe aspect of that. And then just below that is the fuel dilution. Uh, it's supposed to be at least 0.2% uh, fuel dilution. I stayed at half of a percent fuel dilution. So again, we're not getting a lot of fuel into the oil. If you get a lot of fuel into the oil, it's going to uh, significantly change your viscosity and your flash point. But mine did not. And I also recommend getting these tests done, even if you're not going to do extreme or more high end oil change intervals, because I got a test done a while ago and I found my flash point was high, likely from a dirty or clogged injector. So that's why it's always good to get these tests done. And then antifreeze and water, zero across the board. That means there was no contaminants. The head gasket's not leaking. There's no water in the oil, which you can get from very, very short trips. All that fantastic across the board. Insoluble is basically stuff floating around the oil that gets past the oil filter. It's supposed to be uh, at 0.6% is the maximum recommended. I stayed at 0.2 for 5,000 and 10,000 miles. And then finally, TBN, this is a big one. Total base number of additives. That's basically the acidity of the oil. We started off at 6.7 and we need to remain above one. We dropped to 4.4 at 5,000 miles and 3.7 at 10,000 miles. So it dropped a lot more from zero to five than it did from five to 10. Now, uh, as far as some of these numbers being a little bit higher at 10,000 miles versus five, which is what really what you wouldn't expect, I emailed Blackstone basically asking them about that. Why would those numbers be higher at 10 than at five? And they basically said, they're not exactly sure why the counts were slightly higher in the latest sample. They don't typically find additive elements decrease with mileage in any case. So the, basically that TBN number and the wear levels are a better indicator of whether the additives are still working well. It is possible the differences were due to a margin of error in testing or slight differences in how the sample was collected. So basically they said that the engine was looking really, really good. So I'm not really sure if the contamination was on my end or their end, but like they said, the wear metals and the TBN number really tell a better story about what's going on. Because if there's a problem, you're gonna get accelerated wear and see that in the wear metals or the uh, the TBN number is going to be much, much lower and the ad, the oil is going to become very acidic. So, and then as far as the comments, let's look at the comments from all three tests. Uh, the zero mile test, that was the brand new virgin sample right out of the bottle. Uh, they said the report for the unused 020 in the analysis, they didn't detect much of anything but the elements from the additives package and basically some other trace elements like the aluminum are common in virgin oil. They didn't detect any water or insolubles. That's good. That means this oil uh, was well put together and they're doing a good job keeping contaminants out of it. The flash point was good and high. Viscosity was correct for 020. The TBN number started off at a strong 6.7. The oil should work well for the intended application. They look forward to seeing the results because I told Blackstone what I was doing and that they were going to be getting both of these results. And at 5,000 miles, the mid-service looked good. Wear metals were relatively steady compared to the trends for this engine. Potassium and sodium, which are your, some of the contaminants, they were very low. So there was no concern about coolants getting into the, uh, the engine. The silicone was at six parts per million 
And that basically meant that the air filter was doing a good job because the silicone is basically gonna be like dirt getting into the engine and that's keeping unfiltered air out of the system. Viscosity was on target with no contamination from fuel to speak of. TBN was 4.4, so the additives are doing good. The oil looks good and you're, looks like I'm good to go for 10,000 and they're looking forward to see it. And the report basically looked good. And the 10,000 miles comment, uh, the oil hardly deteriorated with the extra added miles onto it. The viscosity remained on target, meaning the oil wasn't shearing or didn't thicken from use. Like we would get sludge form from the oil breaking down, basically it'll start to thicken and form sludge. The insoluble count held steady, so the oil wasn't excessively oxidized. The TBN number, while it was lower, was still a very strong. That basically means that the active additives were not depleted. Uh, the wear levels looked fine as well. Uh, with the only real change being two ppm increase in iron which is normal accumulation no harmful fluids turned up so basically they gave me a clean bill of health and they told me to try again at 12 or 13,000 miles now i'm stopping at 10 that's good enough for me i'm basically doing two oil changes a year with this but uh this is kind of what i was expecting i really wasn't expecting much deterioration from 5,000 to 10,000 miles because of the Toyota recommended 10,000 and the type of driving I do because I go through the owner's manual and it says a lot of the parameters for 10,000, which a lot of people actually don't meet. Uh, again, I said this and I get a lot of hate in a lot of my videos for this. 10,000 mile oil changes are not recommended for everybody. It has to be recommended by the manufacturer and you really have to qualify for it because unfortunately a lot of dealers are telling people, oh, just everybody just do 10,000. That's wrong. You shouldn't be telling people that. 5,000 is good for the average person. Average miles, average mix of driving, that's fine. There's people on both ends of the extremes. Extreme highway, I think, can go further. I think extreme city should go less than 5,000 miles because you're going to get uh, water in the oil. You're going to get higher levels of fuel dilution, basically stop and go driving is the worst for engine oil so um, if you look in your owner's manual if they, even if they do recommend 10 you got it you can really look at the parameters and if you don't meet all of them you shouldn't do 10 so uh, like i've said to people before i don't recommend 10 for everybody i think 10 is for a really select group of people to do a ton of highway driving and this being a toyota corolla a lot of people use this car the way i do for basically just racking up tons of miles as a highway car this is a pretty simple engine Port injection only, no direct injection, no turbochargers. This is the perfect application for doing these uh, long oil changes with this car. And this is the probably fourth or fifth test I've done, and they've all come back really good. Like I said, I did the one test. I had a minor problem that wasn't related to the oil. I had a probably clogged fuel injector that the test showed that I never would have known otherwise. That's why it's always good to get a test. Even if you're not doing extended oil changes, it's always good to get a test because you never know what you're going to find, and I wouldn't have known. I had that clogged injector. I ran a few bottles of fuel system cleaner through it and it appears to have fixed that issue. So for all those people that were curious of what does the oil look like at 5,000 versus 10,000 miles, you can see these results. Uh, they're basically where I expect to be and they're pretty on par. Despite the numbers being a little bit higher, like the uh, additive package numbers at 10,000 versus five, uh, the more useful things like the wear metals and the TBN number showed Everything looks good with this engine. I still have zero fuel uh, oil consumption on this engine. Car runs strong, car runs great. I'm gonna to continue to drive this car for really as long as possible since I basically just use this as a work car and it's an inexpensive and uh, basic car just for driving back and forth to work for me. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.